Welcome to part 4 of the SCA 80Q amplifier series. In part 1, I unboxed the never opened 1978 kit. In part 2, I tested all the capacitors, resistors, and semiconductors. And in part 3, I repaired the bent and scratched faceplate. If you missed those videos, you may want to go back and check them out. Links in the description. The manual for the kit is broken down into four sections. Mechanical assembly, wiring the main chassis, wiring the front panel, and final assembly. In this video, I'll complete the first section, mechanical assembly. There'll be some electronics work too, and I'll also show you how to test potentiometers. First, I'll organize the parts we need. That's better. Now I'll put the pictorial diagram where I can easily reference it. Perfect. Let's begin. Step one says to first select the QP double T rocker switch. There are three types of rocker switches in the kit. DPDT, DP double T, and QP double T. DPDT stands for dual pole, dual throw. DP double T stands for dual pole, triple throw, and QP double T stands for quad pole, triple throw. Pole refers to how many circuits can be switched. The two dual pole switches have two switchable circuits, one, two, and the quad pole has four, one, two, three, four. Throw refers to the number of switch positions. The dual throw switch has two positions, one, two, and the triple throws have three, one, two, three. Now that we understand switches a little better, let's get them installed. Step one continues, saying to install the QP double T switch with the spring return position toward the center of the panel. That's the springy side there. Here we go. To make things easy, you can see I'm using one of the many red plastic nut starter tools I've collected from building Heath kits. Step one, done. Step two says to install the power switch so that the two wires are toward the bottom of the chassis. Let's do it. Wow, this magnetized screwdriver just isn't cutting it. Guess I'll have to make my own screw starter. I'll cut a piece of double-sided tape and stick it to this leftover IKEA dowel. Stick the screw to the tape and install the screw. Much better. Now the next screw. And step two is done. I'll use my sticky dowel for the rest of the video, but note I did order a set of these German freaky fellow gripper drivers to hopefully do a better job in the future. Sticky dowel? Freaky fellow? Oh, flux. If you're interested, there's an Amazon link to these in the description. They're pretty nice. Okay, step three, install one of the DP double T switches. Okay, I can do that. Step three done. Step four, install the remaining DP double T switch. Well, why didn't you say so before? Okay, okay. Step four done. Step five, install the two DP DT switches on it. Step five done. Step six, install the phone jack. Step six, done. Step seven, install the volume control. Note that there's an input selector switch and four potentiometers. Each has already been cleaned and tested. Now, if you don't understand how a potentiometer works, check out my video, how does a volume control work? I'll leave a link in the description. It might help you to understand what we're going to do next, and that is test the volume control. I'll use my antique VTVM in resistance mode, black lead to left channel wiper, and red to right channel input. This is a 250K potentiometer, and that's what we're getting. I'll turn the volume control clockwise now. Resistance goes smoothly to zero. Perfect. I'll switch the red lead to output. Resistance is 250K when fully clockwise, good. And when I turn counterclockwise, resistance slowly goes to zero, excellent. Now I'll test the right channel. Black to wiper, red to input. Looks good. Switch red to output. Great, our volume control passes the test. Let's install it. Step seven says to make sure the tab of the volume control engages the small hole. Here's the tab, and it fits like this. Step seven, done. Step eight, install the balance control. Here it is, part number 167224. Step 
Step 8 done. Step 9, install the base control. Done. Step 10, install the treble control. Done. Now it's time for the back panel. Step 11 says to install one of the input strips. OK. Step 11 done. Step 12, install the other input strip. Here we go again. Step 12 done. Step 13, install one of the screw terminal strips. Step 13 done. Step 14, install the other screw terminal strip. Step 14 done. Step 15, install the unswitched AC outlet. Check. Step 16, install the other AC outlet. And another check. 17, install a four lug terminal strip, no problem. I'm gonna wanna keep an eye out on terminal three, awful close to the mounting screw. Step 17, done. 18, install the fuse holder. I need to remove the nut and lock washer first. The rubber washer stays where it is. Step 18, done. Step 19, install the rubber feet to chassis bottom. Here's the bottom, and here's a foot. Feet installed. Step 20, install the smaller capacitor bracket. I'll skip this for now and show you why later in the video. Steps 21 through 23 say to install the three larger brackets. One, two, three, and to install the clamp hardware. One, two, three. Later, the capacitors will slip in like this. Let's install the brackets. One, two, Three. Step 24, install the U-shaped brackets. Here they are. Step 24, done. Step 25, install the transformer. Here it is. I need to remove the right rear foot first. Now I can install it. Transformer installed. Steps 26 and 27 say to install the two PC-17 circuit boards, but mine aren't ready. I lifted a bunch of components on the pre-built boards for testing and removed a bunch as they tested bad. Time to rebuild them. I've got a board set up in my PC holder and the replacement parts organized and ready to go. On my mark, get set, go.
I only showed one board being rebuilt, but both are ready and I'll install those now. That completes the steps for mechanical assembly. Well, except for step 20, which I skipped because it called for the smaller capacitor clamp to be installed. That clamp is intended for this multi-section capacitor, which I'm replacing with these three individual capacitors. So instead of a clamp, I need a terminal strip. Well, two actually, as you can see in my layout. I'll tell you what all this means in the next episode, but for now, I just want to get those terminal strips installed. First, I'll use an existing hole to mount them. The capacitors will fit like this. Now I'll take my big tip and a little flux and solder the other legs of the strips to the chassis. Just need to clean up the mess a bit. And the mechanical assembly of our amp is complete. Now it's time to wire the main chassis. I'll do that in the next video. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.